Hello, everyone. Dr. Victoria Skirbo here speaking to you from the Seeds of Transformation Healing Center in Wareham, Massachusetts. So can you believe it? We're back to Taroscopes, and this time we're going to be doing the Taroscopes for January 2022 for the sign of Gemini. That is a Gemini sun, Gemini moon, Gemini ascendant. Uh, we'll start with the astrology. Um, the one thing about January readings, uh, less so with the astrology, probably um, more aptly with the card reading is that the first reading of the year, uh, it's not just, uh, we're not calling this just a reading for January, but it could also apply to the entire year. Um, but it might be something to, um, you know, consider when you're, um, when we're, we're doing these, uh, these card readings. So let's talk about the astrology because uh, there's a couple of uh, things happening. Um, we start the we start the year with uh, a trine between um, the sun and Uranus. This is very uh, revolutionary energy. Uh, it can be somewhat chaotic. Um, Gemini, you know, you're. I wouldn't say you're comfortable in chaos, but. Um, there's, I think, a part of you that understands it, uh, maybe more than some other signs. So while you may not like it, um, it, I, it maybe it's not as um, disorienting for you as it could be for other signs. We do have a new moon, however, on the second day of January um, in the sign of uh, Capricorn, of course, on the same day, Mercury, your ruler, moves into Aquarius. So we have Mercury in Aquarius, uh, at this on the same day as that new moon in in uh, Capricorn. Now, uh, talk. Let's talk about the new moon in Capricorn first. That new moon in Capricorn will be falling in your eighth house. So, your eighth house is your um, your shared resources, your your money, perhaps um, uh, your feelings. Um, it it deals with insurance and it deals with death and and taxes, and it deal also deals with, um, um, I was gonna say heredity, but that's not it. Um, when somebody passes away and, and you get money, I'll think of it. Anyway, that, <laughs> for some reason, I, I always forget that, that word. Um, so something like that may be starting to Gemini. Um, it is an opportunity uh, in Capricorn um, to come to a sense of uh, authority, perhaps over some of, of that stuff. Perhaps um, you need a little bit more oversight when it comes to your taxes or a little more oversight when it comes to your shared resources with somebody else. Uh, you need to be careful with that stuff. Um, at this time, mainly, uh, not so much because of the new moon in Capricorn, but the fact that Venus, the planet of money, is is uh, retrograding in Capricorn um, in that house for you. So there's a reevaluation of your values. And, um, you know, this could even be a business relationship. So, uh, you know, it has to do with, it has to do with um, your agreements around money perhaps and uh, whose is what and what is whose and, and um, just, you know, being a little bit more diligent in that, in that area um, and do your taxes. Um, yeah, it may be more important for you than most <laughs> to make sure that you got a good accountant and they're doing their taxes um, because there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of confusion between the change in the tax laws uh, when um, the Republicans are in and um, all the COVID stuff. Uh, I think it's confusing for a lot of people, so. Okay, I, my husband came in, had me taste something he was making. <laughs> um, okay, so we have the new moon in Capricorn. On the 8th, Venus is going to be making a conjunction to the sun. It's significant because Venus is retrograde and it is sort of the, the high point of the Venus cycle, the Venus retrograde cycle, in that Venus is as close to the Earth as it is, as it will be through the cycle, and so it really is uh, with our our uh, feelings and and our values and 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 the importance of um, 
you know, being an authority in your own life and respecting that um, is a very, um, very potent at that time. And uh, an opportunity for us, of course, to really get down to what it is that's important to us. And that's gonna continue because the notes of the moon um, in, on January 18th will be moving into Taurus, the North Node. Scorpio, the South Node, the nodes have been in your sign. The North Node's been in Gemini and the South Node in Sagittarius for 18 months. So it's a well-worn, um, it's a well, it's a well-worn path. And in your chart, that a path runs through your house of who you are and who you relate to. So it has been somewhat of a roller coaster ride for you guys with the nodes being in those signs for 18 months. And now it moves into Taurus and that takes a little bit of the pressure off of you actually. So, um, but we do have Mercury go retrograde on the 14th, which is your ruling planet. So while, um, you know, things are better um, for you as a sign, um, a lot of the, the it, it's almost like when, when the North Node moves into a sign, there's this like intense focus of energy um, and always like fighting the past, you know, to a certain extent. And if, and if there's a planet square the nodes at any time, um, it can, it, there are times when the past is significant and there's time when the past should be left in the past. Um, but for you guys, um, it's a little bit of a, even though Mercury goes retrograde. And um, we also have a full moon in the sign of cancer. That full moon is uh, exactly opposite, of course, the sun, right? Because that's a full moon, but the sun is conjunct Pluto. Uh, in fact, it makes its conjunction the day before uh, to Pluto. And that starts a synodic cycle, a year-long synodic cycle between the sun and Pluto. And then the next day we have this uh, full moon in cancer. And of course, cancer is very powerful. Uh, the moon is very powerful in cancer. We have powerful, powerful feelings. So there's really, really deep feelings that are going to be expressed just in general. And then for you, um, it's going to be in the area of your resources, your sense of value and self-worth, your ability to nurture yourself and your shared resources. And, you know, sometimes um, there's energies from other people that drain us if we allow them to. So we have to be aware of that at this time. And this, and this uh, combination, I think, will, um, will help you become pretty aware of, of where you stand in that. And then, you know, you proceed from that, from that point as to what you're going to do. The sun moves into your fellow air sign of Aquarius. That is... Um, in your chart that will stimulate your your ninth house and so um it's a good time to take a class or it would be a, a good time to uh, maybe publish something if you have the opportunity and you have some material that you've wanted to publish this would be a, a good time to do that i think because um you know, the, it, the sun is shining and people are looking, you know, where the sun shines, people look, you know, <laughs> so they'll be looking for uh, philosophies or, you know, meaning or, uh, you know, somebody who has taken the time to ponder some of the deeper, um, the deeper things of life. Um, because people are searching, they're searching for reasons, they're searching for meaning, they're, they're, it really is shifting on such a deep and profound level. And, uh, you know, in part, it's because of all that, um, you know, everything that happens sort of um, just like piles onto the things that happened before. And it's not really a piling, it's a building upon, I guess you want to say. Um, so this is all part of the grand plan, I suppose. <laughs> I suppose Mars goes into is goes into Capricorn. It might be a, a good time on, on the 24th, maybe a good time to, to get those taxes in. <laughs> um, Mercury retrogrades back into, into Capricorn 
And uh, I believe it might even make a conjunction to Pluto. Let me see. Um, yeah, it makes a conjunction to Pluto on the 28th. This is actually um, the second of three Pluto Saturn conjunctions, just like Venus has um, three Pluto Venus conjunctions. Sa um, Mercury does as well because it goes through its retrograde period uh, right around the degree of Pluto. And so that's pretty profound uh, for all of us. Um, for you, again, um, we're dealing with that um, that eighth house of shared resources. So uh, be aware of that. And for Geminis out there, um, I'm thinking specifically of an ex-president perhaps, um, all this energy in the house of taxes may not bode well. Okay, so let's take a look at the cards and I'm going to utilize, do, 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 do. Oh, what cards did I want to use? Um, I guess I'm going to use this deck right here. This is, I might have used this deck. Oh, no, I think I used this deck the last time for Libra. So this is the Arthurian Tarot. And uh, I've had it for years uh, since the 90s i think whoops hold on sorry about this it just i go out of focus and then i can't all right let's give it a moment let's give it a moment oh dear i'm sorry guys let me see if i can fix this sorry about that i I could not for the life of me get it to focus. I ended up having to shut it off and turn it back on. So this is for uh, the month of January, 2022, for the signs of, oops, excuse me, for the sign of Gemini, Gemini, sun, moon, or and or rising sign. Okay, so let's just, a look. Oops. Okay. All right. I just got a message. The jig is up. The jig is up. I'm going to just put it out there. Okay. So we start here with the Six of Swords. The Six of Swords. Um, the Six of Swords is a is an isn't an, an energy of um, moving away from troubled waters, right? Uh, moving to calmer waters calming the mind, trying to find balance within the mind, uh, moving to whatever you have to do to balance to balance your mind. And uh, I'll just, because I don't use these cards very often. This is the, uh, the Six of Swords. I mean, the Six of, yeah, the Six of Swords. These men um, have put their swords are in the, in the sheath, they're not out, um, and they are looking for, uh, they're looking for something, they're looking to the stars here. Um, so they're looking for some amount of peace. So as I said, uh, once the nodes move out of your sign, uh, I think you're gonna feel a little bit lighter um, as it was. What's crossing this is the Knight of Spears, the Knight of Spears is the Knight of Wands. And um, there's, it's, it's as if the, the battle is, the battle is, is calling to you. And um, they, you know, it, it wants you to, to come and, and, and interact with it. But um, 
you need to you need to make sure that you're mentally stable enough or that you are um otherwise it's too much stress and strain on your mind okay so we have this in at the bottom we have the seven of shields seven of shields this is called the castle of wonder the seven of shields is an energy of um well, you know, it's interesting. It's a seven energy, right? It's seven, the seven of, of, of shields. It is an energy of um, protection. It's an energy of, um, of, of quiet, of, of, of time to think. Uh, seven is the, is the vibration of anal, anal, analyzing. And so um the seven of of pentacles in the regular deck usually is about uh resting from your from your toils um or it could be that work still needs to be done most of it's done but not all of it's done but you get to rest before like it it really sort of um calls to you in some way at the end of the year we're going to have a mars retrograde uh in gemini and so it's very possible that at that time um, there's going to be more stress on the Gemini energy, but you, you may actually have a little bit of a break. Um, through, well, nobody's getting a break this year. I shouldn't say that because it's a really powerful year. Astrologically, um, it's going to require a lot of, um, a lot of good works <laughs> on our part. Um, and that doesn't have to be hard work, it just has to be good works, right? Okay. So we have this, what's, what's at the root of this is that things are still developing. Things aren't quite ready. You're not quite ready for prime time. In the past, we have the death card. We have the death card. This is called uh, Gwyn, Gwyn Abnud and the Wild, and the wild Hunt wild hunt when abnud and the wild hunt um but it is it is about change it is about you know darkness on the horizon uh death a uh, death of an of maybe a dream or a death of uh, of a, of an individual but there's also been quite a bit of death um that we've had to deal with so uh, but that does that does sit in the past so it could be an actual death of some somebody that you know died, or um, you yourself had a change in such a way that the old you uh, is, and you had to be reborn into the person that you are now. In the um, in the sky, we have the strength card. The strength card. So the strength card is a card. Uh, it's a spiritual card. The strength is a spiritual strength. It is the raising of the Kundalini energy. Um, it is um, finding your voice. So there is energy for that. There is energy to help to uh, foster your voice, foster what you have to say um, and what needs to be said. In the immediate future, we have the Queen of Swords in this deck, it's Morgaine. Um, the Queen of Swords is a little bit cold, some people might think. She is very compassionate, but she's also very just and not sentimental at all. So the energy that you need to either foster or the energy that you will come up against is all of those things. Uh, fair, compassionate, but not sentimental. And so not really swayed by emotion, but swayed by compassion, right? Um, because she has walked in those shoes. She has, she has loved and she has lost and she has learned. She has made mistakes and she's paid for them dearly. This is somebody who understands that every action 
as an equal act opposite reaction. And sometimes actions have unintended consequences, but consequences all the same. So it pays through uh, January for you, Gemini, to foster a sense of um, good judgment. Think about things before you do them, before you sign on the dotted line or anything like that. These things need to be thought over. How it's seen from the outside, we have the Nine of Cups. This is a, a healing card. We can see this person doing healing on this night in the forest. So there is a sense of healing either for you or from you, <laughs> not from you. I'm thinking of one particular Gemini <laughs> and it's not you. <laughs> um, yeah, so people see that you have, that you need this time that you need to, that you're taking to quiet the mind. It's so very important in January for you to quiet your mind. We have the lovers in, in, the, um, in the domestic situation. The lovers is a card of choice. Um, it, you know, it's, it's seen as, as, as lovers, right? But it's mostly a card of choice. And, um, and even when you choose a partner, when you choose a partner to devote your life to, you're making quite a big choice and sometimes you don't even know the choices that you're making uh, and how that's gonna impact the rest of your life. So uh, every choice is an important choice and you're gonna have some choices to make in your domestic situation uh, that can actually change the direction of your life. So that is there for you. Um, and of course, if you are able to take the time that you need to rest your mind, those choices will become clearer and clearer. So our uh, hopes and fears is the priestess, the high priestess. It's uh, Nimu, Nimu. Um, you know, this is the wisdom of the ages. This is the wisdom of the moon. This is direct connection to spirit. Um, this is knowing. And I think we hope to know. We hope to know what we are doing is right. We hope to know that what we're doing makes a difference and that it's going to, uh, it's the thing to do, right? It's, it's, it's the right thing. It's the right thing. Let's see the outcome. We have the page of shields, the badger. So this is the page of pentacles. Um, so there's an aggression here. Um, Yeah, there's there's an aggression here, but um, it's more of a oops, Jesus, sorry about that. It's more of a protection than it is an aggression. Like it's not like the person's coming at you, um, but it can, but it will if if you piss it off, or if if it feels um, if it feels like it's in danger. And so I think you just have to be aware that people out there are really afraid. And when people are afraid, they do things uncharacteristically because they're doing things out of fear. And that can be a very dangerous thing. Um, so you need to be aware that there are people out there that can be rather aggressive. Uh, just something that you need to keep in mind as you walk through your life. I think we all have to keep in mind of that. And then the outcome, a uh, major arcana card that I picked up is temperance. And so there's a balancing, there's a healing. So this is a time of healing, um, but there can be somebody in your life that's being pretty aggressive around you. So just be aware of that. We have the eight of cups. This is about turning your back on, you know, something that you've worked on for a long time, perhaps. Uh, maybe that has something to do with the choices uh, uh, around the lovers in, uh, in a domestic situation. We have the tower card. So disruption and the horns one. This is the devil card. In this deck, the horned one is less sinister because we're dealing with the, the energy of manifestation, of impregnation, 
of um, of the the masculine, the sensual masculine, not necessarily, you know, using the energy that um, that you know something like ambition, uh, you know, works for. Um, but it, it's much more of like a pleasurable body kind of energy in this deck anyway. So, um, but if you are um, an ex-president say, this underneath it, um, it does look like um, you might be having a tower moment. And again, these readings are for the month of January, but you can also apply it to the um, to the entire month. So, well, that was interesting. Whew, that was powerful. So mostly, mostly rest, um, but you are going to be required to have good judgment, and you really need to be um, careful around your money situation. And that really came from more. I think came from the the astrology, but I saw it in the cards as well. We had a lot of shields and those are pentacles i believe in this deck and we certainly feel more protected and more safe when we have a little bit more money in the bank right so <laughs> although we don't feel very safe with banks now do we we're gonna have to figure something out about that huh all right guys i hope you enjoyed that like and subscribe uh if you're interested in a reading with me there is a link below you can get onto my website where you go to the services page and you can see what I what I offer. Um, you can also donate. There's a link down there for a donation as well. If you if you think um, you'd like to do that for me, thank you ahead of time. And um, there's something else down there, but <laughs> for entertainment purposes only. All right, guys, much love. Have a great January and I will see you again in February for the Tarascopes for Gemini in February. Take care, everyone. Much love.